this short presentation is to present the status of an evaluation of the Hydra 70 rocket system in a ground-to-ground -ground role. The Hydra 70 rocket system has evolved with improvements in helicopter fire control and can be fired at a high rate. The introduction of the highly effective multi-purpose submunition warhead up to a range of 7,000 meters and availability of smoke screen and flare rockets provide new capabilities. Since Hydra 70 rockets are standard ammunition for units with attack helicopters, Headquarters, Department of the Army, requested the Army Development Employment Activity, ADEA, at Fort Lewis, Washington, to evaluate the potential contribution of Hydra 70 rockets for infantry units. The message from DA in July 1984 highlighted these considerations. The potential to thicken firepower of the maneuver unit and to support the battalion mortars with a high volume of fire. Evaluation of different rockets, including the submunition warhead, to provide anti-personnel, anti-materiel, and top attack of armor effects. Also to be evaluated is the capability to rapidly provide smoke screen or illumination effects. Use of the Hydra 70 in direct or indirect fire on a target. The evaluation would also include the potential application of units army-wide or for special application in light forces. After planning meetings in August and October 1984, a test plan was developed to conduct a display firing to be followed by a more complete evaluation in the summer 1985. The display firing of the Hydra 70 in the surface roll was scheduled for Yuma Proving Grounds to take advantage of their data acquisition facilities. The launching system utilized for the display firing was an M91 chemical rocket launcher, originally modified by the Army to accept six 19-tube aircraft launchers with further recent modifications by BEI Defense Systems Company, including electric motors for aiming. This launcher was primarily used to provide a low-cost method to evaluate the basic concept of using the rockets in the surface roll. The launcher can be emplaced by two men. BEI supported the test with a remote set fusing and firing system evolved from the Cobra rocket system. Loading each rocket involves inserting the rocket from the front of the launcher, latching the detent at the rear end and plugging in the remote set fuse umbilical. The first firing series was with remote set red phosphorus smoke screen rockets provided by BEI Defense Systems. First a pair, and then a ripple of seven rockets were fired. A good smoke screen was generated at a range of 1,000 meters within less than a minute. The second firing series was with standard M156 white phosphorus unitary warheads on Mark 66 motors to a range of 4,000 meters. Two pairs were used to confirm proper aiming in elevation and azimuth. Two ripples of four pairs each were then fired. Yuma Proving Grounds routinely score rocket impacts with a TV camera in a helicopter hovering over the target area. The line of fire is from right to left. The area is marked with white panels to form squares of 150 meters and 300 meters to aid in scoring. The impacts of the four pair ripples of rockets bracketed the target. The impacts resulted in a typical unitary rocket pattern, a long ellipse, with most of the impacts long of the target center. By contrast, the multi-purpose submunition warhead has changed the geometry of rocket impacts. The electronic fuse is remotely set to function at the desired range, creating what is called the wall in space. The expulsion charge ejects the nine separately fused bomblets, each with a decelerator resulting in a near vertical fall. The normal range dispersion of rockets is nearly eliminated. Each submunition provides fragmenting sidewalls for anti-personnel and anti-material effects, 
while the shaped charge will penetrate the top of most armored vehicles. Each of the nine submunitions provides anti-personnel effects almost equivalent to one of the standard 10-pound high-explosive warheads. The initial submunition launch was a single round set to impact at 2,000 meters. The overhead TV shows a direct hit on the center of the target. The second launch was a pair of submunition rockets set for the same distance. Impacts were again within the intended impact zone. Another pair was launched and bracketed the target. The next firing was a two-pair ripple. The resulting impacts were again in the target area. The last firing at 2,000 meters was a three-pair ripple. 135 submunitions from 15 rockets at 2,000 meters impacted in a four-minute period. The overhead scoring of the average impact point for all submunitions at 2,000 meters was three meters short of the target and 25 meters to the right, covering the intended target zone. The next series of submunition warheads were set to impact at 4,000 meters. The same sequence of firing a single, two pairs, and two ripples of rockets were used. Video from the overhead aircraft was available at the launch site. It performed as a forward observer for adjusting fire. The fuse set time was adjusted after the first two firings, and the next pair and two ripples were set to impact in the intended zone. The last submunition rockets were set to function at 6,000 meters. The 15 rockets were again launched in the same sequence as before. The longer range resulted in wider azimuth dispersion, but the wall and space concept assured that the rockets functioned at the preset range and resulted in submunition impacts around the 6,000 meter range. The submunitions fall nearly vertically, regardless of their altitude at ejection. The final test series after sundown was to fire six M257 flare warheads. The flares on Mark 66 motors provided illumination at a range of 3,500 meters, two single rockets, and then two pairs of rockets were fired to provide continuous illumination. Each flare warhead provides one million candle power for two minutes. A full launcher load of 114 rockets would provide continuous illumination for over three hours. BEI Defense Systems has continued to improve their ground launch fusing and firing control box, which provides the capability to input range, ripple size, zone control, and variable footprint size. Although the 114 tube modified M91 launcher was used as a low cost method to conduct the display firing, Adia indicated that any final launcher configuration would have to be vehicle mounted to maximize mobility. The Missile Command Laboratory evaluated the high mobility multipurpose wheeled vehicle Humvee and mounted part of an M91 launcher cluster for display purposes. The load capability limits the Humvee configuration to three 19 tube launchers. This prototype was not expected to be fired and further definition of system operational requirements is required to provide the basis for an integrated system. The largely successful display firing provided demonstration of a high volume of fire using four different rocket types. Ranges were varied from 1,000 to 6,000 meters. The Hydra 70 rockets and launchers in the surface roll are readily available for further development but are dependent upon further definition of system and operational requirements by proponent agencies. <laughs>